Hi everyone, and welcome to Let's Experience Untitled Goose Game. So you might have seen this game, it's kind of everywhere right now, everybody's having fun with it. It was also on my wish list for a really long time, so I was super excited to see it come out. And I was really excited to use this opportunity to add it to the Let's Experience series. So as you know, this series is all about exploring how games could give us uh, psychological benefits from playing them. And yes, even a game as silly as Untitled Goose. So I have been playing it a little bit. I couldn't wait. I was super impatient um, and I've been loving it so far. But now it's time to uh, share my thoughts. I had my uh, initial impression and I want to go ahead and share the research behind what I think the psychological benefits are behind playing this game. But first, I must honk. Honk. Just be generally mischievous. Okay. So first, whenever I want to, oh yes, run. Whenever I want to really assess what a game does for me, I wanna first figure out what am I feeling when I start it up. So um, right now, my previous, in my personal mood, my personal mood, and I think this is just practicing some media mindfulness, um, I am a little bit stressed. I had a tough week at work. I had to take care of a lot of things and some family things too. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm practicing my gratitude and everything. I'm trying to stay in high spirits. Um, but you know, it does get to you. And I think a game like this, whoop, just about to unleash myself onto the world. There I go. Nobody can mess with me. Anyway, so again, this, this title card, everything about this game is absolutely adorable. Truly, truly, you know, just cute. And our our goose here is just waddles and runs so realistically. It's so sweet. And it really draws you in. <clears throat> and um, as I was saying, so my, my initial mood coming into this game, I'm a little stressed. I have to recover some of my psychological um, kind of needs and functions after a stressful work week and a stressful, you know, personal week. So. I think this game is exactly what the doctor ordered, so to speak. Uh, hello, Mr. Gardner. Whoop! I'm gonna take your keys. I'm gonna take your keys. Come back. Come back. Come here. I got him. Doink. <laughs> okay, I don't. I don't need them right now. I'm a goose. I don't have any thumbs to actually turn a key. I'm gonna get with some carrots. Yeah. There you go. I can just get my little goose legs. No! Okay, it worked. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. I got way too uh, interested in my to-do list there. Right? That was, those are, oh, look at me. I am such a productive goose. As, as I said, I have played this a little bit before just so that I wouldn't get too distracted by solving everything while also talking about research. So now that I've gotten started and I've already caused some havoc, I've talked about my mood going into the game, now on to research. Um, I think this game is just completely, I don't know, it's, it has a lot of high hedonic valence. And I'll put something at the bottom to help describe that. It's just so sweet. You know, there's, there's no real big consequences here. There's nothing really terrible going on. You know, it's actually quiet. You can hear all the nature sounds. It's, it's nice. You know, it feels nice. It kind of helps you be a little bit mindful, a little calm. You know, I mean, you do get a, like a little like, oop, stressed about, you don't see me. I'm trying to stealth my way around. But I mean, relatively speaking, that's not a lot of stress or anxiety. In fact, we just get to experience a lot of cuteness. Honk. Honk, 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 honk. Okay, okay, that's annoying. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's another thing, is that this game is all about causing mischief. And that is actually a lot of fun. And that's kind of a mystery to us. You know, why is it so much fun to just be such a rascal? Okay, so what am I else? Uh, I gotta make him wear his sun hat. Oh, I know how to do that. Come here. The psychology behind wanting to cause mischief, that's actually, there, there's not a lot on that that I saw, but I do think, hello, you can't catch me. 
I do think that it's because we do a lot of emotional labor throughout the day at work, at school, with our family. Haha. -ha. Can't get it now. What? I, I don't. Okay. I want to keep his hat. Oh, no, he can get it. Oh, gosh. Ah! Come on, come on. Come on. It's mine. Now you can't get it, right? I'm going to go hide it. Anyways, we do a lot of emotional labor in our day-to-day -day lives uh, and at work, depends on the kind of job you have. I do a little bit, not too much. Uh, there was a point in which I was gonna be a teacher when I was trying to teach. That caused uh, a lot of emotional labor. Emotional labor is where you have to monitor your emotions, um, figure out how to um, only like show positive emotions and emotionally support others in your work environment. It's good and it's a very nice skill to have. However, it takes a lot out of you. And so a game like this where you can really just cut loose and be just completely mischievous, you don't have to worry about anybody but yourself in this game. Um, it's actually quite therapeutic. You can let go of all that strain. Yay. Uh, you can let go of all that strain and stress that it takes to just be emotionally um, accountable um, all the time for people in your life or in the workplace and being able to re whoop, being able to recover from that stress of course would as you guessed it lead to our psychological well-being so I, I think that's one big reason why people break in the lake why people are really enjoying this game because you don't have to worry about anything even when you do these terrible things like put his hat you know, hide his hat or put this rake in the lake. I'm just gonna, I don't know. I'm not being stealthy at all. I'm just gonna gun for it. Just hopefully he doesn't see. Oh no, you can't catch me. Please no. Oh, my, oh. Actually, how about I distract you? Yes, mine. Um, <laughs> getting distracted. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it's really nice to be able to recover from all of that. Um, I think that's one reason why we enjoy being so mischievous. Uh, another thing, and to talk more deeply about um, morality in video games and the research that's gone into it, I mean, not to get too deep, I mean, we're just a goose causing some trouble. We're not, you know, these aren't big, like, moral issues that we're a part of, uh, so this research is more applicable to probably uh, more dramatic or uh, eudaimonic games um, with storylines that require a lot of, you know, choices, maybe stuff like Until Dawn or Walking Dead, stuff like that. Um, but there is a little bit of morality here. I mean, our only goal, our only goals are to just cause havoc and to get on people's nerves. So a little bit of morality. And besides research, I mean... People, researchers do say that uh, for media, no matter what movie or game, oh no, he doesn't like me. No matter what movie or game you're watching or playing, um, it's always gonna be a moral situation. There's no such thing as a moral vacuum, even when you're playing something like this. Um, oh, right, let me go ahead and get this and yoink. Um, it's always a moral situation. Even as our little goose here, we have choices to make. You know, how much of a little rascal do I want to be? And uh, personally, um, with how I'd like to present myself morally, I don't want to be that much of a rascal. I just kind of want to, I like checking off on my checklist. I think it's adorable and, and fun. Um, but I, I don't need to like completely tear apart their lives. But one thing that actually really does make a difference in the player's perspective when uh, when they're this goose is the fact that you're not, you're not causing that much trouble, which research shows that, you know, when you're in a situation where the moral salience and moral exemplar of the story, and I'll put down some definitions for those. The exemplar is our little goose here, who's supposed to be exemplifying, giving us an example of morality. Um, when their exemplar isn't particularly strong in terms of like uh, relatability or having to make really big choices, we don't really engage with media or games the same way we would if it was something uh, more intense, more serious. 
yoink. Um, and another bit of research, there's probably a whole bunch of pop-ups coming up on the bottom of the screen. Another bit of research says that if our playable character, if our main character doesn't really look like us, if it's not really somebody that we could literally like imagine ourselves being in the shoes of, then we can kind of disengage morally. And I think that's actually, um, well, okay, so an example, if you're playing like an alien in a game, and that alien, uh, as that alien, your job is to you know, hurt people or something like that. Um, you might be less morally, like, uh, less morally bothered by hurting people in the game because you're not you. You're, you're definitely something else. You know, you're an alien. Same thing here. I'm a goose. I'm a goose in this game. And so I don't feel that bad because I'm not, you know, Courtney. I'm not me as this goose. Hello? Can I sing? I'm not Courtney as this goose. You know, I don't feel as morally uh, entangled uh, here. So that's another bit of research. The less you're like your playable character, the less it really bothers you uh, to do bad things. Um, which for some games, it's like, oh, you know, what does that mean? That opens lots of doors psychologically and morally. But for this game, it's, it's just sweetness because the other part of this uh, there's a real weak sense of consequences. These people are incredibly patient. You know, they just kind of go about their lives. No, no, no. Don't see me. Don't see me. They just kind of go about their lives even when I'm doing all this terrible stuff. The worst thing they do is shoo me around or put up signs. Uh, and I think there's a real sense of release with that. When we can play this game, and we know we can be downright awful. We can be, you know, terrible, terrible, terrible. Break all the rules, completely ignore. Uh oh, don't go looking for it. Don't go looking for it. Okay, completely terrible. <laughs> and, um, and there are no consequences. It really lets us relax a little bit. It does take a lot of energy to always be considerate of others. Um, and we can relax because they don't seem, these people, these village people, don't seem to really mind. Whoop. I'm not doing anything. I am an innocent goose. Look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> okay. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Okay. And so that's nice. I think there's always in all of us this kind of desire to be seen as the worst we can be, or at least you're the most annoying we can be, and still be considered lovable. You know, I mean, look at how cute I am. I am totally lovable and nobody's that upset with me. I can just completely just throw everything to the wind and be reckless with abandon, or I don't know those phrases, I keep mixing them up. Uh, I need the sandwich and I need a basket. Okay, I think the basket and sandwich over here. I think those are actually really beneficial for us, those those aspects of this game. We can just relax a little bit. Oh, I didn't have to be so stealthy for the apple. There's an apple here. You know what, I'm just playing this hard mode, that's all. Yeah. Extra intense, nightmare mode, untitled goose. Okay, uh, basket, hello, thank you. So morality, that was my little bit about morality. Um, what I do also want to talk about is, you know, just the hedonic valence back to just the general cheeriness of this game. I think it's very alluring. And, and if we've had too much um, seriousness in our lives, if we've been watching or reading too many serious things, uh, there is something as of an imbalance. I mean, when presented with a choice between Untitled Goose Game, where you're doing all this, you're just, you know, waddle, 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 waddling around, causing mischief, um, and given a game, let's see, like, Fallout, uh, yeah, something like Fallout, um, given the choice between something like Untitled Goose and something like Fallout, not that it's that serious, I mean, you could play Fallout pretty funny, but, you know, something that's more eudaimonic, um, People would often say that, you know, oh, one's better than the other. Like, this isn't as serious. Wait. Boop. Sorry. I'm sorry. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I still need the sandwich in the radio. What am I doing? What 
am I doing with my life? Anyways, given the chance, the choice between those two, people would say like, oh, well, one's better because it's, um, it's more serious. Well, no, not necessarily. We do need a balance in our life. We can't play or watch or think just serious things forever. We're going to need to relax and, and kind of take it all away. Radio has to be the last. And kind of just take ourselves a little less seriously for a second. You know, get that hedonic kind of uh, rush where we focus more on ourselves, the day-to-day -day life of living. Yep, the, you got a lot of work ahead of you. Yeah, look at my picnic. It is absolutely majestic. Don't you like it? Okay, you do. You deal with this. You clean that up, and I'll move on. <laughs> Anyways, I completed all of this. I will head on to the next level um, and try to remain focused. So we do need a balance. I think that this game is a really good balance, especially for when you're in a kind of a situation, an emotional situation like myself, where you've had a rough time, you've had a rough week. Um, it just kind of relaxes you. You know, it gets you thinking cognitively about, you know, oh, you know, what kind of things can I do here? Quonk, 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 quonk. See? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, are you okay? Boink. What you want? What you want? Yeah. Oh, I was supposed to get glasses. Get the glasses. Mine. Um. So, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think this game is just a really good combination of sweetness and being just mischievous and not having to worry too much about other people. And that's something I read recently too, another bit of research was that games can offer you a really nice situation for self experience. I'm just in, I'm just by myself with myself as a goose, just enjoying my day. Um, I don't really have to, in this moment, I don't have to stress too much about other people. And that is an important, uh, that is an important break to have. And I think games, this game and other games like it, um, yeah, you're gonna have to go get that. Go get it. <laughs> uh, this game and others like it can, can give you that, that experience, that kind of relaxation. And you know what, I've already, just playing this, I know I've already played this before, but just playing this right now, I do feel like a boost in my mood. Um, I feel better, I feel less stressed. Um, I also feel a good sense of mastery and competence, which is a psychological need according to self-determination theory. You know, we need to feel masterful and competent, especially when we've been made to feel, okay, was he gonna come by his freaking thing? Hello? I'm gonna like honk at him till he gets over there. Run, 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 run. run away from me. Go buy your thing. Okay, okay, I'm absolutely terrifying him. Okay, there we go. Um, I completely forgot what I was saying. I would just got to... Oh, my mood! My mood is so much better. I, I feel... I feel genuinely good and better right now. I've gotten this nice short-term boost to my... Oop. Yep, you gotta pick. Yep, I know. Cool. Though, like, honestly, she should remember what she has. Oh, what if I just stole it right now? I don't want to, like, interrupt that. I need my. Yeah. Oh, okay, excuse me. Excuse me. Anyways, guys, um, I think that's actually it for me today. I absolutely love this game. I think, for all the reasons I said before, it could actually be a really useful tool for when you're stressed, when you need to not care so much about other people so if you have like a job or um a living situation where you're you're always having to take care of others you're always having to be super duper polite and courteous this might be just a nice harmless way to just be in your own mind and just remember that you know you can be a little mischievous you can you know it's not like it's not too bad <laughs> so to speak you know just to remember that 
or just to contemplate what it's like to be mischievous and lovable and cute and not have to feel guilty over, you know, little things. Okay, so I think I'll call it a day here. Thank you so much for watching and joining me as I was this terrible, awful, but adorable goose. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend this game. If you know of any other games uh, like it or games that you think could offer players some emotionally intelligent, you know, psychological benefits, please go ahead and comment them or send me a message. I'd be happy to check them out. And yes. That's it for today. Thank you so much and happy playing. Honk. Honk, 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 honk. <laughs>